Hello, ladies and gents. Today is time to spend self-checking your publication writing written analysis piece. So um, I'm going to pull up a student who had shared a document with me um, earlier this week for their analysis piece. piece. But um, of course, before you can do this step, you would have had to watch the video from right before on Thursday, March 12th, writing lesson section, there's a video there that tells you the analysis publication format. This was a video that was older, just from the first nine weeks, but the analysis publication format remains the same. And as you can see on this person's document, they followed the analysis publication format to the T, even by putting their name first and then analysis publication second. So you need to, hopefully you've done this already because this was due for um, over that long weekend before we went cyber. So hopefully you already have the document typed out for the piece that you plan on publishing. Now in the past, we have used checklists, <coughs> excuse me, to look at all content, style, organization, and conventions targets. We're going to do this a little different this time, and we're going to look mainly at the rubric. This rubric is um, from your learning target packet. So if you have your learning target packet, it is the final page from that learning target packet. However, you might not um, have it available to you. So I'm going to have this as one of the links that you can open and view underneath this today's um lesson. So you can open this and view it. It's the final page of that document. And you're going to go through and check your piece, make self-edit, self-checks for each of the eight listed bulleted items. Let's look at the first one here. Effectively addresses all parts of the task, demonstrating in-depth analytic understanding of the text. Well, what does that mean? If we go back to the first page of the learning target packet and we look at our content targets, that means that we look at and make sure we properly broke down the prompt. Did we break down the prompt properly? Have we circled the two skills from that prompt? And are we addressing those two skills in each of our body paragraphs of, of our essay? So what should you check for effectively addressing all parts of the task? Well, first, you need to make sure that your thesis statement is accurate and addresses all parts of the task of the prompt. You then need to check your claim statements as well as your analysis part of your body paragraphs. Do your claim statements address both circled skills? And does the analysis section talk about how your quoted evidence addresses both parts of the skills from your claim? Those are the main areas you need to look at thesis statement, and body paragraphs, especially the claim statement and the analysis section. Make sure that you are addressing every part of the task that you need to because there's always two skills that are addressed in an analytical essay. Of course, that thesis statement is also restated in the conclusion section at the very end, so make sure you double check that as well. The next bulleted item is having an effective introduction, development, which is your body, and conclusion. Identifying an opinion, topic, and controlling idea related to the text. This is looking at the organization of your essay. So do you have a clear indented intro, indented body paragraphs, and indented conclusion? Does your intro have a hook? And does it have a transition sentence? Does it have a thesis statement? Does your body paragraphs begin with their claim, go into a quoted evidence, and end with a full sentence analysis? Does your conclusion begin with your overall analysis of the text? What's significant about the text? Does it then have a generalization of the text? And then does it end with your restated thesis? That next bullet is all about the order. And so you need to make sure the order of your essay is in the proper order, sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, indented and ready to go. That also ties into the third bullet, where it mentions a strong organizational structure. So this is a little more specific as to the parts you need to have, and this one is making sure all parts are done well. So make sure you check for these two bullets and your organizational structure of the essay. The fourth bullet is in regards to your analysis. 
thorough analysis of explicit and implicit meanings from the text effectively supports your claims, opinions, ideas, and inferences. We're going back into that content sentence section for this one. And we're looking at content learning target number five. We need to be both explicit and implicit in our full sentence analysis. So you need to check after your evidence in the analysis, do you have specific words that you repeat over again explicitly? And then do you connect those specific words to your claim implicitly using your ideas? So double check, you need both parts in your full sentence analysis. When the text says this little moment, this shows the claim I'm mentioning in the opening sentence because, and you should do that more than once because more than once means that you are doing a thorough job in your full sentence analysis. The next bulleted item says substantial, accurate, and direct references to the text using key details, details, examples, quotes, facts, and or definitions. That's looking again at your body paragraphs. Do you have a quoted evidence within the middle of your body paragraphs? Does that evidence fully connect nicely to the claim that you're making? Does the evidence have enough information to work with? For you to be able to give a strong full sentence analysis that's both explicit and implicit, or is it too weak and you don't really have much to grab from it? Does it in fact support your claim that you say at the beginning of your paragraph? As you check for all of those things I've just mentioned, you need to make sure that you're checking that quoted evidence. The next bullet, substantial reference to the main idea and relevant key details to support the writer's purpose. That, again, is how well you're able, the main idea of each of your body paragraphs is your claim. So in order to be able to connect your claim to your key details, you need to explain how those little moments, that explicit moments of your evidence, supports the claim you say at the beginning in your full sentence analysis. There's a lot of points that tie in to that full sentence analysis. <coughs> The next few bullets are for your style and conventions targets. Skillful use of transitions to link ideas. As we've talked throughout the nine weeks, make sure that your transitions aren't just obvious transitions that are tacked on to the beginning. Make sure there are also subtle transitions that use words that connect your ideas thoughtfully and consistently, not just at the beginning of each sentence, but or a paragraph, but also in between your sentences of your paragraph. Your transitions should be smoothly taking your reader through your claim and into your evidence, then from your evidence and into your full sentence analysis. So make sure you're not just transitioning between paragraphs, but you're also transitioning between sentences, especially between the sentences that connect your um three parts of your body paragraph analysis. The next bullet, effective use of precise language, effective or and domain specific vocab drawn from the text to explain the topic and or convey experiences and events. That one ties into all of your style learning targets. Let's look at them. With your style learning targets, remember, you need to have a formal style and tone. Stay away from those words that are not formal, no slang terms. Stay away from second person. Use either first, which is okay, or third, which is awesome and the best type of point of view to use through a piece to make it formal. Make sure you're using the voice of the expert. Use those terms that are mentioned in the prompt, those reading skill terms that we've talked about in your intro, in your body paragraphs, and in your conclusion. You should see the language of reading class throughout. If it's a nonfiction piece, maybe you can figure out a way to incorporate the word text structure or um, facts, depending on what your prompt is wanting you to address. If it's 
uh, or nonfiction. If it's fictional piece, you may want to incorporate those terms like theme and mood and all of those literary terms we talked about. Obviously, that is all depending on the task of the prompt, but you need to make sure that you are fully addressing that voice of the expert in your piece. Vary your sentence structures. Don't just use all simple, boring sentences. Vary those sentence structures up. Make sure that your word choice is on point. It's specific and precise. And make sure that you use punctuation and words and phrases for an effect. Try that dash. Try, try that parenthesis where it works and makes sense. However, in regards to wordiness and redundancy, be careful. I see that running rampant throughout our papers. So avoid narrating our topic and avoid that repeated or excessive word use. The last part of this is those conventions target. Few errors, if any, are present in sentence formation, grammar, usage, spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. Errors present do not interfere with the meaning. As always, double check for those simple grammatical things. Remember, we talk about those as being the nails and the paint and the boards of a house. If we look at our essay as a house, people don't say, oh, you know, you that, that house has good nails in the beams. They, they use the best nails possible. But you know what? If those nails weren't doing their job, it makes the essay fall apart. Just like nails that aren't really present or doing their job in a house is going to make not a strong house at all. So make sure that you're double checking your sentence for information, grammar, usage, spelling, and capitalization, punctuation in your piece. You want few, if any, errors. Remember, this is publication. We're presenting these for perfect. And yes, we still will be presenting them. So make sure that you're ready for that. It'll be online and it'll be a great experience, a new experience, which always makes things fun. And lastly, remember the publication packet where I email that to all of your parents as well as to the school administration so they can see the quality of your work. So be ready for that as well. So again, today's task is for you to have that document open, typed up, and just check for every area of the bullets on the rubric. Please make sure this is a self-check. Your peer check will be Thursday. Um, but I need you to share this document with me. To do so, after you self-checked it, I'm going to know you're done by you clicking on that share link. Just like this student has already done in the past. And when this share link opens, which is still loading right now, simply because um, I'm recording and so it makes it a little bit slower. But when the share link opens, it'll ask you to share it with someone. Please put Zapia and you'll be able to see Jamie Zapia within this. If you need help with that, I will be online live um, for three different hour sessions and I can help you with sharing. Otherwise, if you know how to share it, please make sure you do share this document with me. And that's your last step. And that's how you will be turning in this work for me today is by sharing the document with me. So go ahead and get working on your self-check.